Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the docs going through the load more component. Let's scroll through these docs together. Let's learn what this page is saying. If you have any questions, any concerns, this video may help you. I wanna make everything on this docs page as clear as possible. We're going over load more. We're going to look at the use cases. We're going to look at the different options, the implementation method, and we're going to try to make this super transparent. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Also know that this is just scrolling down this page and explaining everything. If you want the how-to walkthrough in our how-to clonable, that's a different video. So go check that out. That together with this is going to give you a solid understanding of how all of this component works. Let's start with the use cases. Number one, to prevent a long load time. Maybe you have 100 items, 500 items, 1,000 items in your collection list. You don't wanna load all of them on the page at the same time. You can load just a few and then continue to load more by click, by scrolling, by all at the same time. There's a lot of options. You can be more efficient using this load more component. Maybe you don't want pagination to load a new page. Webflow native pagination will load a new web page by default when you go click that next button. We have set up our load more to not do that. You can load those items directly under the existing items, or you can use our own custom pagination, which updates the items in real time, not on a new page. And then last, maybe you wanna filter items inside pagination. We have a pagination option inside load more, and you can then filter items in that pagination, and the pagination will update as you filter through it. Very powerful. And now how to use it. There's three code blocks here. Number one is the standard implementation. Number two is using pagination. And number three is infinite scroll. I'm gonna start up at the top first. We're going to go through each one and the standard is a great place to start. This is the most simple basic setup. This setup is when you want the user to manually click load more. You are not going to be filtering items on a page. You don't need our custom pagination. You want there to be a load more button. Someone clicks it and then more items load under the page. You click it, more items load under the page. Under the items on the page, not a new page. They're going to load under the items of the new page. All right, let's go through this code. Let's try to understand this. The very first thing we need to do is put our library script file here on the site. And this is going to contain all the juicy code that we wrote so that this works. And what this is, is the script specific to your build. We have a function. This is going to be invoked immediately. It's gonna happen right away without anything happening. And what it's going to do is create a new instance of the F and Suite CMS library. That is going to be applied to the blog posts list. This is the class that you apply to the collection list element, not the collection list wrapper, not the collection list item, the collection list. If you don't know what this is, check out the how-to videos. It shows you exactly visually in designer. And once you have that class placed correctly, we have our new instance on that collection list. And we're going to store that in a variable called fsmagic. fsmagic can now be used anywhere else inside of this script to run components. And this component right here is load more. So we have our fsmagic, which is our instance. We're going to load more on that instance. And then we have a button. And that button is going to be the native Webflow pagination next button. Let me show this to you visually. Down here, we have the button. It is this button, the next button. When you go turn on pagination on your collection list, Webflow is going to generate this button for you. We need to keep it on the page and it's going to be the button that actually loads more items when the user clicks it. And that needs a class. That class is going to be load more button. You can do your own class here. It doesn't have to be that class. Reset IX true. This is going to 
reset Webflow interactions. You would need something like this if you have interactions placed on the newly loaded items. So you're loading more items on the page. Those items need to have Webflow interactions. Set that to true. If you don't have any Webflow interactions on the page or the newly loaded items don't have any Webflow interactions, you can go and set that to false. Next, we have animation. Animation can be enabled to true, duration, easing, effects. Now, I don't recommend that you just try to figure out how to write this. That is exactly why we have the visual script. And the visual script writer is going to allow you, let me zoom in here for you. Let's actually choose the load more. And the animation is going to let you control this information visually. You're not expected to understand the exact wording for all of this. That is why we built this for you. So if I go and fill this stuff out, we can see the full extent of what we can do with animation. And then go ahead, you can copy paste this portion to your site or use the visual script writer for the whole thing. That's why we made it for you. Back to the docs. Great, that's it. If you go put this on your site and you have this class placed correctly, this pla class placed correctly, you are going to have an element that will load more items on the page. That's it, standard implementation, we're done. Now let's go and add pagination. Pagination is going to create a pagination element on the page. And this is an element that we are going to drop in for you. You don't build the pagination element. You're, you have limited styling options and we are going to give it to you. And I'm not going to cover what we just covered. I'll start right here at load all. Load all means all the items are loaded onto the page. And this is required for pagination. The way that it works is we put the pagination on the page and then we load all the items into that pagination so the user can go and interact with it, click around on it, and in real time, they can navigate through hundreds and hundreds of items, even past the 100 item limit that you see in Webflow. And let's go over this pagination. We have a nice juicy option called Paginate, and inside Paginate, we're going to enable true. We want Paginate to work. We can choose the items per page, which is the amount of items that we show on each page of the pagination. That could be five, it could be 10, it could be 100, it doesn't matter. For as many items there are on the page and as many items there are inside the pagination, the pagination element is going to update its numbers accordingly. It all works automatically, super easy. Then we're going to insert the pagination and that does exactly what it says. We are inserting the pagination into the pagination container. So this is a div on the page. We're gonna place this class on that div. Nothing else goes into the div. And then the library is going to paste. I, paste is not the official JavaScript term, but I like to use it because it makes sense to you. We're going to paste this pagination element inside the pagination container. If you wanna be more JavaScript driven, we are going to append that pagination element to the pagination container, which is put inside of it. We're going to insert it. Okay, that's clear. Then we have some CSS options for you. These accept hex values. We have the background color of the pagination, the background color active, text color, text color active, border color. This is going to allow you to customize this pagination element for your site, for your colors. And if you want to learn more about this, please go check out the how-to build. There's a video showing you how this works, how this looks, and there's a video to show you how to use custom CSS to further customize the look and feel of the pagination. Awesome. This one happens to have animation. You can have it enabled, you can have it false, up to you. Use infinite scroll. This is the third option. And this third option is going to create an infinite scroll environment, an infinite, infinite scroll functionality. And what that means is when the user gets to the end of the list, 
we're going to automatically load more items. So in this first one, the user has to manually click load more to load more on the page. Here, this is going to load more automatically based on their scroll position. So if I'm scrolling through the list and I get to the end, we know the user's at the end and then we're going to click the button ourselves with JavaScript secretly and then more items are going to load under that existing list. So this is an automatic scroller. It, it's made to keep people engaged and keep going through the content. We have all the same information from above, all the same. Load all has to be set to false here because we are not loading all the items. We are only loading when it gets to a certain point in the list. And we, we didn't really fully cover this, so let, let me just stop there and go and explain load all. Load all true is going to load all of the items in your collection list. This could be your entire collection. If you have a thousand items in your collection, load all true is going to load all 1000 on the page. If you limit those items, maybe you have a thousand items in your collection, but your collection list as seen here, the collection list has a limit of 500, load all true is going to load all 500. So it's really loading everything that is in that list behind the native Webflow pagination. Okay, if you don't understand that, go check out the how-to. There's one specifically on the load all. Let's get back to infinite scroll. We have infinite scroll set to true. That's saying, library, we're doing infinite scroll. We're ready to rock and roll with this. And then we need to set the percentage. This is the percent of total height of the collection list for infinite scroll to trigger. 70 is a good number but based on how many items you have in your list, based on how quick you want things to load, you can play around with this number. Try 60, try 50, try 90, try some things out. Every list is different. 70 is a good number to start with. Excellent. And now we just went through those three, blo three blocks. That's great. Let's continue scrolling through this. Um, Reset IX, we went through this. Load all, we went through this. This write-up of these options is a further explanation. So if you're watching this video, you just heard me explain it. And if you want to really focus down on what everything is doing, this should give another type of explanation. And all of these are neat and organized and try to explain this in the most simple way possible. Of course, if you have any questions about how this works, reach out to us, just ask us. We're here, we're ready to answer. We want you to understand this to the best of your ability. And that's it. We just got to the end of the docs. I hope that this was useful. And if you have any questions, again, we are here. And let me scroll all the way down and show you this. If you're a first time user, we have free support Sweet JS, we are here to help you. We're here to help you implement this library, understand this, and take your Webflow build to the next level. That's effing sweet.